Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spare Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to create a Docker to stream your Linux desktop through your browser. So well, let's get started. Now, this is a little bit more advanced than the last video that we shot for the Docker container series. Basically on the last video, all we did was set up a blank container file and did a hello world. So that was more of uh, introductory to getting a Docker file set up. But today we're gonna go through a couple of processes, which is the thought process, the actual dev build, and then we're gonna convert that into a Docker file for an actual container build. So this is actually a pretty good starting point if you have an idea that you wanna turn into a little container or a server for your needs. So to jump into it, we have our Proxmox, which is our virtual environment. And in our last video, I showed you guys how to install Alpine. And there is a reason why I install Alpine through this versus using a CT container. More so because CT containers actually don't have the ability to like stream X11 or uh, audio, or there's a bunch of stuff that's missing through CT versus running a regular VM. During tests or during when I do builds like this, I'd rather run a full VM versus running a CT and then I'll convert it from there. Now we have our Alpine test, which is what we're gonna be using an Alpine that we built last a couple of days ago with the Docker setup. So we're gonna be actually converting it over to there. First, I'm gonna go into Alpine test and I'm gonna jump into console. And this was right under my nose this whole time. Proxmox uses no VNC right here. Do you see that it says no VNC, which is actually streamable VNC through your web browser. And <laughs> trying to discover this method of streaming your desktop through the browser took me forever until I realized that I'm already doing it through Proxmox. So why not just use what they have? And that's, that's how I came to conclusion of how to get this streamable through your browser. Anyway, to jump in, I am actually gonna SSH into this box just because I could change the font size so it's easier to read. So I'm gonna SSH root into 192.168.187. Uh, there we have it. So this is my Alpine test box. Everything that we're gonna do in Alpine test, we're gonna be able to convert into a Docker file. The thought is to build a simple desktop that is streamable through your browser, right? That's the whole conclusion that you want. So in this blank Alpine slate, we're gonna have to install a bunch of applications to get that where that is possible. So I'm gonna do APK, and actually, you know what? Before that, I'm gonna do, yeah, apk add nano. I just like nano as an editor, even though I could use vi. I'm gonna go into nano, go into etc, go into uh, apk and go into repositories and unlock community. Uh, this has been done on my last video before, I just have to do it now, just so I could get the most repositories that I need. Now that I got that unlocked, I can now start installing applications. First, we're gonna need a couple of things. So I'm gonna do apk add, uh, we're gonna need sudo because we're gonna run it as a regular user. So we're gonna add sudo. We're also gonna add uh, git uh, because some, the no VNC needs git to download. We're also gonna need xfce4, obviously. At this point, we're just using a blank xfce. If you wanted all the default settings and all the default programs, you could do xfce4 goodies but I'm not gonna use this. I'm just gonna leave it as small as possible and that's what we want. Um, next, we're gonna need an icon theme because if you're gonna need a desktop, you're gonna definitely need some icons. So I'm gonna be using Enza icon theme. I actually rather like this icon theme. That's why I chose this one. You could use any icon theme that you want. Uh, next, we're gonna need Bash because a lot of software actually requires Bash to run and we don't have Bash in Alpine de as default. We're also gonna need Python. Three, that's because no VNC requires Python. Uh, Tiger VNC, because we need a VNC server. You can actually change the Tiger VNC up with X11 VNC. That's really up to you if you wanna use that way. Uh, but I rather prefer Tiger VNC. And then XFCE4 terminal, just so we have an application that we could interface the terminal with. Because with XFCE4 blank, all you're getting is really just a panel and some settings. You're not getting any applications with it. So we're gonna add all these applications and it shouldn't take too long, maybe half a minute or 15 seconds, depending on your internet. So at least we have all the software base that we need. Now you're gonna need to jot that down because that is also what we're gonna need to use for the Docker file. So now that everything is installed, uh, we're also gonna need to add a user because we're not gonna stick with using the root user. We're gonna be using um, uh, the user Alpine basically. So I'm gonna be doing add user 
dash h so you can set up the home folder. You don't need these extra tags. You could actually just do add user alpine and it'll kind of like default all the stuff for you. But if you want to change it up, especially the bash or the shell, you need to do it this way. Slash home slash alpine. So we're going to give it a home folder. Uh, dash s, we're going to use bin bash because that's the bash that we're going to use. Uh, we're going to set it all to default. So it's dash D. And then we're going to create the name called Alpine. So now we just created the user called Alpine. So we're also going to need to add a password to it because that just created the user. So we're going to do P-A-S-S-W-D Alpine. Now remember, these are the steps that we're also going to need in the future. So jot these down as you go. So we're going to add Alpine. And keep in mind, we're asking for a password right now. So we're going to change the password to Alpine. Alpine. Bad or similar, it doesn't matter. You could just retype it. Alpine. So it's going to be a simple password. So remember, we had to type that in twice. And there you go. We have our user, our password, the uh, folder structures, everything we need. We are good with that. So next, we are going to grab no VNC. So we're going to git clone HTTPS github.com slash no VNC slash no capital VNC. And we're going to export this to opt folder, no VNC. And let's make that capital, no VNC like that. So now it's going to download that into the no VNC folder. Now, after running no VNC for the first time, I know this because I've done it before, it requires you to download Webify. So we're going to grab that ahead of time. You're going to run into this issue if you don't, and you're going to know how to fix it anyway. But uh, we're going to grab git clone HTTPS GitHub no VNC and web socket fi. And we're going to move that over to opt no VNC utils. And in here, we're going to make a folder called web socketify. There you go. Now we have no VNC all set up, uh, downloaded whatever we need to download. Uh, we got our Tiger VNC, we got our X desktop, we got basically everything we need to get this going. We got all the programs. So remember to jot all that down. I'll show you why we need it in a minute. Now for Tiger VNC to properly run, we actually needed to give it an X startup file. So I am gonna go through this whole process of going into home, Alpine, and in here, I'm going to do a make dir.vnc. And then in this folder itself, I'm going to make a file called x start up. And then we're going to give it a little bit of a command. So uh, crunch bang bin bash. And then we're going to do start xfce4. And then we're going to do the ampersand. So it keeps it continuing to work. That's the file we need in the xvnc startup. Next, we need to create a password for the Alpine user for VNC. Now, because I'm in the root user right now, it's going to generate the files over to my root. So what I'm going to do is exit this and pop into my Alpine user. And the password is Alpine. Now, what we need to do here is actually create that file called VNC password like that. It's going to look blank but it is saying something there. Don't worry about it. It is going to look like that. So here you could type your password. It's going to be the same. Alpine, Alpine. Would you like to enter and view only password? No. So remember, I typed in the password twice and I had to hit no. And there you go. I created the file in the Alpine user home directory with the password file. Now we are all set. Technically, what we should have done, which I think I skipped a step, is the sudoer file. So I'm going to go back into root and make sure that I actually put Alpine as a sudoer. And I'm going to do this with nano etc sudoer, sudoers, ers. And on the bottom, I'm just going to add Alpine all equals all no password or no pwd colon all. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is just that you don't have to type in the password for sudo. It's a disposable container, so you could install all this stuff. Don't worry about typing in the password, and then you could destroy it afterwards. It's, it's perfectly fine. You can make it so you have to type in the password. I just find that a little bit easier when you do it this way. Again, these are all settings that you could do whatever you want to. 
So now that we have the entire base set up, we installed all the programs for XFCE. We got uh, Tiger VNC installed. We got no VNC installed. We set up the user. We set up the password. We added the user to the studio file. We are now ready to start up the desktop and actually try to see if we can connect to it. So first, I I don't remember the path. I think it's 182. So I'm going to do IPA just to see what the IP address is. 187. Okay. I am going to run VNC server. And at this point, I'm going to do 99. This port matters. 00, 0 would be your main desktop, which is what you're view currently viewing at. So you can't use 900 0 unless your desktop is already presented. So normally you can use 0, 01 or just one or two, three, all the way up to 99. This directly reflects the port that you're going to be connecting to. So 99 is an easy number to remember, and it's also going to be VNC port 5999, not 5900 or 5901. The last two digits of the port signifies what the display is. So I'm going to do VNC colon 99. Oh, okay, you know what? I have to be in the other user. So let's jump back into this user because there's no password file on that one. And we're going to do VNC server 99. So uh, since I created the VNC folder in root, I'm not able to write into it. So what I need to do is own it again. So I'm just gonna change the ownership of that folder. So there you go. After I changed the ownership of the folder, now it says Alpine no group. I can now go back into there and edit it, um, which I don't need, really need to. I just need to do VNC P-A-S-S-W-D for Alpine. And then I could just do Alpine, Alpine, and no. So there you go. It didn't kick back with an error that I wasn't able to write into the folder. So now I could do VNC server colon 99. All right, now it's starting up the VNC server. Uh, the only downside to this is that I didn't put the ampersand at the back, so it's just gonna, it won't let me type in any more commands. So what I'm gonna do is control C, drop out of, into terminal. Now that I know it starts up, there's no errors or anything, I can now hit the up command VNC and then add the ampersand at the end. So I'll allow the XFCE to continue running. So give it a second and I should be able to type after all this keeps flooding through. All right, now we can actually start up our no VNC. So I'm gonna go change directory over to opt and no VNC. There's a software in here called utils. And in here you run this program called no VNC proxy dash dash VNC local host and the port was 5999. Now that I hit that, it gives me the address that I need to jump into. So I have my browser. I'm going to go into 192.168.105.187.6080. 6080. It's going to load this directory, which you should have actually just used VNC or you could use VNC Lite. It's up to you. VNC, I'm going to hit connect. So now it's asking for my credentials, which we set up to be Alpine. And there we have it. This is our desktop running off what we just built. Um, what's cool about this software is if I go into here, setting and remote rescaling, this will adjust the resolution to what I need. Copy and paste works. This no VNC works really, really good. Uh, now that I also have terminal, I could pop in here and add programs that I want. Uh, obviously, we don't have a browser because we didn't install one. We actually don't have a lot of applications, so we didn't install anything. This is just bare metal, but it is completely working. Now, with all the steps that we just took to build this desktop, we now just need to convert all the steps that we just did into our Docker file, and then you will have the same results in a container. Now, we are back in our desktop. I'm going to cancel out of everything. Control C, clear this screen. Uh, maybe CD back to home to make it look cleaner, clear, or control L. Um, I am going to type in the word history. And this kind of will help me figure out what I need to do. I don't have the complete history here because it actually didn't install all the applications that I had. Maybe it's here. Let's see. Root. Uh, oh, it's under root. History. Okay. So now I have the APK that I need to add, add user that I needed. All this stuff literally in this history that you're seeing is what I need. Um, let me go back into my terminal, exit this, and go into my root folder and type in history for that so I could copy and paste. So with the history here, 
I can now create a new template file with what the information I took from when I was building the operating system. So I'm going to go into SSH 192.168.105.129. 129 is actually the Alpine server, which is this one right in the background. That's 129, while this is 187. I could actually minimize this, I don't need that right now. But going through the process now, I'm gonna be able to convert everything that I did from the actual desktop on that VM over to a Docker file. Now, find a working directory that you could work with. I am in the root account over here, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just gonna make a directory and call this Alpine XFCE4, something that I could keep track of. And in that folder, I'm going to create two files, actually. Well, mainly one, which is the Docker file, uh, then a second file, which is a shell script to run when you're in the environment, which is what we did when we logged into the other user. That would be your entry file or your shell script to trigger after the operating system has been booted. So I'm going to do touch docker file, and I'm going to do touch entry.sh. So if I list structure, I have two files over there. Now I'm gonna jump into my Docker files. I'm gonna nano into Docker. And we could just start typing what we have in our history over here. If you've watched our first video, this is what we need to begin with. So from Alpine latest, because that's the operating system we're building from. We're also gonna use label maintainer. And this is where I would actually just put Don and then maybe email address, you know, and then close the quote. So now we have the beginning of the file. Now we will do run. And this is where we start adding in all our little programs that we did. Uh, so this app APK right over here, I'm going to grab this copy and we're going to paste this right over here. And then we're going to do a slash over here, backslash to know it's a carrying character. Oop, this is missing an APK. Now I'm also going to do two ampersands here and then we're going to continue off with the next command. Now our next command is actually adding the user. So we're going to do add user dash H, you know, the whole thing over here. So I'm just going to copy this. Now we added our user. After we made the user, we have to add a password. What we're going to do over here is now put two ampersands and echo dash E and then we're going to do Alpine which is the password that we're going to use. And we're also going to use a new line character. So it's a slash N and then it's Alpine again. And then close the quote for the echo. Let me expand that a little so you could see. So it's echo dash E Alpine, the return character, I mean the new line character. Slash R would be return, slash N is new line. And then we're going to pipe that echo into password Alpine. So what this one command did is basically add the user when you're in root, add uh, the home folder, the bash that we're going to be using, uh, default to the user Al uh, Alpine, and then we're going to echo out the password into the Alpine user. So now we did two steps. Again, from your history, I'm just copying what I did. You see the add echo and then password. From here, I am going to do in and 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 now we need to git clone this one into opt novian c. So I'm just going to copy this. Literally, everything that I did here, I'm just copying over. Do a slash here. Put a double ampersand. And then we're also going to git clone this as well. And then we're going to paste this here. And... There we have it, our four little commands that will set up the entire operating system. It's that easy. It's just sudo git, we got the whole application. At this point, what, if you want Firefox, you can add it into Firefox. You know what, I'm gonna do it anyway. So let's do Firefox. So we're gonna add all these, including Firefox, into our uh, plain setup. Now we're not done here yet because we still got extra steps over here where we have to create the X startup file, we have to create a VNC folder, we also have to create um, the password for the VNC. And remember when we were running into the issue of, because I made the folders in root. So what we're gonna use is user Alpine. This will put your account into the Alpine user here. And then we're gonna do work 
der home alpine. So now we have set it up. Anytime we do anything after this point, it's gonna be considered the user alpine, not user root. This way I don't have to worry about the permission issues that I was just having when I was first setting it up. So we're gonna do another run command here because now that we're in this user, I'm gonna make sure the directory is there first. So I'm gonna make dir p, meaning any trailing directories are also created. So uh, dash p home, I think p is recursive, alpine.vnc, just to make sure that it's gonna create that folder. Then in here, I am also gonna do two ampersands, and then I'm gonna do echo dash e uh, crunch bang slash bin bash, and then new line, because we need to make the new line, x start, no, nope, not x start, start xfce four, and I think that's it. We just made the new line and then we just did XFC4. Oh, you know what? Ampersand. Ooh, almost forgot that. And then ampersand. We're gonna append this to the folder home alpine.vnc slash x start up. All right, so now that line will actually just write that um, bin bash and then start XFC to the file called x startup. And I screwed this one up, so that's double ampersand double ampersand again and at this point we're going to make the password all right so we're going to do echo dash e and at this point we did alpine new line alpine new line but at, we actually had to put a no for view only password so we're going to put another n and then another new line because you got to enter the character for that so alpine alpine no and the next line and then we're gonna pipe that into VNC PASWD. Now, because we're still in the user Alpine, this will actually give the password for Alpine, so we are good on that. Um, and then, according to here, um, I'm looking through my list, I made the password, I made everything. I did forget to add the sudoer, so I gotta add that into here. So I'm gonna drop back into where we have still root access. Uh, I'm gonna put it right over here. And we're gonna do double ampersand and do an echo alpine all equals all oops all close no p a s s w d colon all close that and then we're gonna append this to the end of etc sudoers with an s according to how all this looks like. I also added no cache just so it doesn't store the files after you download it. Uh, it makes a little bit of a difference when you're downloading something like a Firefox, which is 200 megs. You kind of want to trim it down as much as possible. So now that we have almost everything, I can't see that we're missing everything. Uh, I went according to this. We basically try to start the server now. So we are pretty much good. What we need to do now is copy entry.sh a lot of times, a lot of people use entry or entry start or the word entry to begin the uh, initial file. So entry is just a standard placeholder that everybody uses. So we're going to copy entry to the root folder of entry. And then we are going to run cmd bin bash, close quote, comma, root folder uh, entry.sh. And then we are close that quote. So basically, the last command is to copy the current folder. You have this little shell script called entry. And then the next command is to run the entry script. All right, we are completely done with this Docker file. That is it. I cat it again just to make sure all the information is there. But that is it. I don't think we need anything else. What I am gonna do now is nano into the entry file. And we're gonna do bin bash because it's a shell script. And we are gonna run VNC server 99 because I nervous if it's gonna pick it up or not the environment we are gonna do user bin just so we know it's gonna directly go to that file folder uh, just to run VNC server um, then we are gonna use opt no VNC utils and then no VNC proxy and then I think it was VNC and then we're gonna do 127.0.0.1 and the port was 5999. You could actually change this to localhost or whatever you want. 
well not whatever you want it's either 127 or local host oh you know what also i gotta put an ampersand here and this i could leave trailing so I, uh, the log files would have something to repeat which would be this right over here and i think we are good now that we got the two files in here it's time to build this docker so i'm going to do docker build dash t and i'm going to call this alpine xfce4 and the current directory that's why we have the period at the end if you're in another folder you wouldn't put the folder structure there but period let's run it and see if there's any errors this is basically doing what we did in the desktop just in a script format and automatic or automated as you can say shouldn't take too long if i didn't have firefox installed it would be even faster but yeah this should take everything that we need uh, now it's running our script we're cloning the directories uh cloning the web sockify perfect now we're running uh, a view only password it's uh, past that it was able to put in the password everything built successful that's it we got everything done so now it's time to run it what we need to do is docker it dash p for port uh we are going to run port 6080 because that's what that uses so 6080 uh, we're also going to name it, so we're going to name this Alpine, whatever you want. And just remember the image name that we just created, which was Alpine XFCE4. And that should be it. Oops, I forgot to hit the word run. Unexpected end of file. We're going to run into these issues. It build perfectly fine. But it's probably the entry file. Did we forget something here? I did find what the issue was. Uh, this was actually the wrong character like this before. You guys probably caught on to it already before I did, but yes, that is the issue that I was having. And now all we have to do is just uh, rebuild it. All right, this again, doesn't take too long. It has all the scripts in there, creates the user. If, if all works well, it should just work after I start it up. Let's give this a few seconds. It's still gotta get the two um, from no VNC. It's still gotta get those two. So all in all, I think take, building this was about three minutes, four minutes. It's, it wasn't too long to build this entire project. And again, this is just a base on what you can do. You can add more applications to it. Uh, if you are planning to run your own services or server or specific programs, you can run off this base and add the programs, but at least you have like a testing platform uh, that you can use. Uh, I have actually everything on my Docker and on my, uh, yes, this is actually uploaded to my Docker Hub and it's also on my GitHub. So if you wanna grab this and modify to all your needs, you can. I do have a latest build and a dev build and the dev build I'm currently working on is adding audio, uh, cleaning up a bunch of the stuff that I'm showing you right now uh, and a few other things I wanna uh, fix up on that. But yes, the dev build would be like what I'm working on. Now we can run this again, which is Docker run IT, grab the port, name is alpine and xfc4 oh it's a typo it's no nvc oh these are the little things that i find <laughs> more user error but i am showing you guys the whole process like i'm not trying to cut it short or anything these things happen so let's go back to entry and let's fix this to no vnc so while I'm at it, I'm going to show you guys how to get rid of and rebuild. So I'm going to do docker container rm to remove. And since we named it alpine, it's going to remove the container alpine. We're not done here. We still got to remove the image. So docker image rm. And since we call the image alpine xfce4, that's what you need to do to remove it. So it's going to delete all this stuff and you're done. It's back, back on a clean slate. So we're going to do docker build dash t alpine xfc4 period we're going to rebuild this one more time just because i that little typo i made so after this it should be fine okay now that it's done building like i said it only takes like a minute or two we're going to run this image again and hopefully this time will work all right there you go it's running the desktop is starting you see all these messages which is really really good if you don't see this message with the critical and all that stuff and the battery that means the desktop didn't run so now we can actually go towards this ip addresses which is 129 so 192 168 105 129 6080 you should be presented with vnc or no vnc there you go 
uh, go to vnc.html. You can always change this vnc.html to index.html and it'll always go into it. I'm fine with just doing it this way. We're gonna hit connect. Oh, wonderful thing. Password works. You can remove this because it's asking that we don't have a power meter or we don't have a power gauge and it's trying to put that little uh, picture up there. Once you remove it, it's not gonna ask you again, but it is a little obnoxious. Those are the little things that I do wanna clean up so it doesn't have to show up. You don't need them. All right, so now that we got the desktop working, I'm gonna show you, um, let's see, APK, sudo APK, let's test that out. Add neo fetch. Okay, we're gonna add that. Yes, perfect, it's downloading. Grab the software that we need. So now I can run Neo fetch, and there we go, Alpine. Now, if I want to go into a browser, just to see how smooth this is. All right, I'm running through the windows. I'm just gonna go to youtube.com slash Nova Spirit Tech. And I'm just gonna play a video, okay? I'm telling you, like, this is extremely smooth. I don't have audio going through here. Um, Pulse Audio is obviously not installed, but there is some um, ways to get audio to work. And look, this is just playing the video. Oops, I paused it. I could go into Stats for Nerds, zero drop frames, everything runs smooth. And this is through uh, Alpine Linux, XFCE, and through your browser. It's actually very, very smooth, especially this is our own little disposable uh, desktop. It's, uh, it's getting there. Again, if you want to, you could just go into the Docker file, add the applications that you want, rebuild it, so every time you will have that specific applications for that specific need. But anyway, that is it. That is building the desktop. I know it's a little bit of a longer video this time, but this is from step one all the way to development of what we want to build all the way to converting that to a docker file to building the actual docker container and then obviously there were some mistakes along the way but we resolved that and everything's all set it's up to you if you want to add more to this program uh, you can take different steps to creating your own server setup if you specifically need a minecraft server or even a space engineer server you could run through these steps and kind of figure out what you need what applications you need to install and what scripts to get it running hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys have any questions hit me up on the comments down below but mainly uh, jump over to our discord because we have a bunch of people who are excited for this stuff and uh, we'll be able to show you even more than what I'm teaching you right over here I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this and learned something from it if you guys are new to this channel consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out and as I say my nerd cave hack till it hurts